Well, how are all you fine people out there today? I hope you're well. Thank you for the response to the uh, Pope video I made about Final Pope being here, Petrus Romanus. The response has been tremendous. It has opened up a large discussion. Uh, there's been some name calling of me, but uh, hey, I can handle it most of the time. Sometimes I get kind of irked. But it usually runs off my back like water off a duck's back <clears throat> most of the time. Um, I know people that go to that are Catholics and go to the Catholic Church find it hard to believe because they go to the masses, the confessions and everything that the, the wrongdoing at the highest level of the main portion of it in the Vatican and the Pope and etc. But if if you look you can find things and if you if you're totally neutral, not on one side or the other, you can understand the point being made. And even this article, you know, this is a two-year-old article, and it's talking about, uh, well, you know, different things. In 05, Benedict should be immune from a lawsuit accused him of conspiracy to hide abuse because he was head of state and then a fed a judge dismissed the case you know the Vatican has their own little protection you know they have like divine immunity I'm not sure exactly what the title is I it escapes me at the moment and I believe they also have a little something about uh, extradition where they can't be or it's really hard to be extradited for prosecutions and then you come down and you know you can you can read the whole already article when, when I get this video made I'm gonna post links in the description box but you can see the sovereignty issue emerged in, in Ireland this be 2010 article where the reports in 09 revealed a widespread cover-up of abuse, widespread sovereignty issue, immune. See, so you have this immunity and sovereignty, and what they do is they have their, just like Obama's got Jay Carney, his speaker, you know, well, the Vatican's got their guy, and he deflects things for them. He denies. He he does like that. Oop. And this one here is a, this is not too long ago, 2012 article. Scandal began last month. Remember, this is a 2012 article, February 17th, I believe, is when this was posted. Scandal began last month with the publication of letters from the former number two Vatican administrator who begged the Pope not to be transferred. After he exposed millions of euros in cost overruns, he was then removed and named the Vatican's U.S. ambassador in Washington. So he wasn't punished, he just became an ambassador. And these news reports subsequently focused on four priests under investigation for using the bank accounts of the Vatican to launder cash. Pope's top banker remains under investigation for breaking Italy's anti-money laundering law, transferring cash from two bank accounts without identifying the sender. He denied it. And then there's a document warning of a plot to kill the Pope which that would be in 2012 and got discredited but you see alleging corruption in the running of the Vatican City State money laundering at the Vatican Bank there's all kinds of stuff going on there now, they can't deny it. 
<clears throat> I mean, these people are all not stupid, right? So you can't say, well, they're, I just, uh, you know, supposedly turned my back on it. And it was all these guys in different positions below me that were all doing this stuff, so I was unknowledgeable about it. No. The buck stops at the top with the guy that runs everything, right? The captain of the ship. The captain of the ship be the Pope. Now, Lake, uh, Benedict has a little legacy. And, and you know, whenever he was a little kid, you know, or older than a little kid, he was uh, allegedly uh, a Hitler youth, so to speak. You know, give him a little youthful indiscretion, and he grows up and becomes Pope. But, 81, Joseph Ratzinger, who was a cardinal then, Pope now, John Paul II appointed him to the position of Prefect of the Congregation for the Divine of the Faith, a notorious department previously called the Supreme Secret Congregation of the Roman and Universal Inquisition. Later, John Paul II put him in charge of concealing thousands of charges of child rape and torture by Catholic priests who were streaming in from victims all around the world. With a staff of 45 to assist him, Pope Benedict Joseph Ratzinger oversaw and controlled every single case of clerical abuse at the Vatican from 2001 until he became Pope in 2005. In that same year, the London Observer reported that Pope Benedict ordered the Catholic clergy not to pass any damaging information about pedophile priests to the press or to law enforcement in a letter sent by Pope Benedict, to every bishop in the world, he ordered that all priesthood abuse and child rape allegations were to be investigated only in the Vatican in the most secretive way, restrained by per a perpetual silence, and everyone is to observe the strictest secret which is commonly regarded as a secret of the Holy Office. So the point I'm making and what I'm saying is you got a Pope sitting then in 1981, John Paul, that knew that these priests were doing these things and with their diplomatic immunity, their Vatican diplomatic immunity and their extradition immunity and all that junk that they got, they hid it instead of doing the right thing and these pedophile priest getting tried by the law like you or me or anybody would would have done to them if we did those things against children like they did they covered them up kept them secret so they look squeaky clean so understand what I'm saying that John Paul knew about it and he designated charge to Benedict and Benedict kept it quiet and under wraps. And then when Benedict, you know, in 2005, just like it said, uh, he had full charge then. He oversaw and controlled every single case. So John Paul dies, and then Benedict is elected Pope. So you have two guys here, John Paul Pope, Benedict Pope. Both of them knew about all those things that happened to their children. But people go to, people look up to the Pope and the Vatican and all that stuff is the closest thing to God on this planet that there is. That's what it's supposed to be. That's supposedly what the Pope is supposed to be. The most holy person on this planet. And then you, you see where I'm, what I'm trying to say? You can't be the most holy person on the planet if you're involved in knowledgeable cover-up and goings on like that because it's wrong. It's wrong in the eyes of God and it puts a stain on the Vatican. And the Vatican dictates everything about all these other Catholic churches in the whole, the whole world. You know, they, they 
send the orders down from the Vatican and it filters out like a big spider web to all the churches and the Catholic churches and stuff. You know? That's the way it is. So it stains all the other little churches that may not be doing nothing wrong. Their guys may not be doing nothing wrong. But they're getting their orders from these guys that are doing wrong. And these guys that are doing wrong at the top of the line, they're supposed to be the cleanest of them all. And instead, you're, I'm trying to show you that this Vatican, search out Malachi Martin videos, Satan has entered the Vatican years ago. That's why junk like this is going on. We're not even getting into the satanic rituals and whatnot, but you can you can even say that pedophilia uh, is pleasing to Satan. Of course it is. And uh, pedophilia by a priest, you know, that really pleases him and satisfies him. And some of them, who knows, they may actually be a ritual. It may not just be a... a perverted pedophilia sex act. It could be a, a, a ritual. Hey, I'll post a link to this one too. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else here? Oh, I'm gonna have uh, another video up here from another site on YouTube. I'll link you to that channel. And there's another discussion in there, a continuation of the link that I put in the prior Pope video with Tom Horn and Steve Quayle. They put that one out uh, going deeper and deeper into the St. Malachi prophecy and discussing the, the uh, more in-depth the resignation of the Pope. Uh, there will also be a, another one in there about the Malachi prophecy and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put another one in there because coming down the line, we're eventually all these things that Jesus said would happen will happen. All these things that Enoch described and the information he gave you about who it is, and well, they're all going to they're all going to end up happening. So there's going to be one video in there about the fallen angel Nephilim and their progeny, the Rephium. hope I pronounced that right. Their children, giants. So I hope you will enjoy uh, clicking those links and listening and thinking. You know, I'm sure I'm going to get, uh, I'll probably get some negative comments and stuff and some negative mails again, but it's been it's been more positive I believe because I do want to make everyone understand I do want to make everyone think because these things it has to do with the final Pope it is gonna happen you know rocks are gonna fall on the seven hills a city that sits on the seven hills at some point. Rocks, fire. And something's going to happen that they just obliterate it. And the next pope, he can't be good to his flock. It's all he's got to do is lead them off a little, a little trail that's not the right way. Maybe you don't even realize it. But it don't take a lot to get you off onto the wrong side. Now you got to pay attention to the things that are said. you got to understand things for it to do you any good. So you got to put your thinking caps on. You're not going to be able to do it in 15 or 20 minutes. You're going to have to think long and hard about these things and gain some understanding. And that's hopefully where this will all lead you. So God bless every one of you. I'll speak to you all real soon when I dig up some more stuff. Bring you some more good things to enlighten you.